In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear men, I'm sure you are well, and people of goodwill, we continue with the um, series for men. I now can confirm that uh, we will not finish today. We will finish, but before the end of the week. Because we need to do the steps that we did for our gracious women until uh, we do also exclusively for all men. Yesterday, as men, we talked about uh, not taking God for granted. And uh, we said that there are a number of things that need to be done by us men because we do not want to have taken God for granted. And we said, that is for yesterday, Monday, that uh, real men are sensitive spiritually. And we need to be men who are sensitive. Having said that, uh, what God is expecting of us. Today, I want to share with you some five areas of failure that the Jews were accused of. And these are the areas, largely, that we have also failed as men. The five areas of failure that Jews were accused of. In the same ways that us men have been accused of today. And God is expecting each one of us to overcome these five areas. Number one, impatience. Even as slaves, they had learned to get what they demanded for. The society today, constantly, is demanding more and more from the government, from the church, from the booths, from everywhere than ever it happened yesterday. For us men, we need to be more patient. There is nothing like quick fix. Part of the reasons why our boys are becoming tepid, it is because, um, maybe not even tepid, um, uh, the reason why our, our boys are becoming a bit lethargic in terms of self-production, it is because we have taught them that there is quick fix. And there is one area on this that we may also need to pay attention to. Those of you who have made a lot of money and are raising boys, some of you are teaching your sons that uh, you have made enough money for them. It is true you have. But the question is, my dear brother, you struggled to make what you have. You may tell me that you struggled for your children. But are you forgetting that your son will have a family? Are you building resilience in him? Tomorrow, he will think that life is as easy as my dad taught me. Listen to this. As a young man who is maybe between 40 and 50, raising a son, you have made enough money. And largely, if not purely, how you have made that money is because of the intervention of your own dad. Your dad took, took you through the rigors of making money. So you have worked very hard, extremely so, to make ends meet. And here you have a son who is 10, 15, or even 20 years. And you want, want, you want him to believe that uh, you don't struggle to get wealthy? No, you must be a very unjust man. Let me ask you, what happens if you die today when your house is not in order? Don't you think you are preparing a possible social misfit? Because your son, your son will tell us, ah, no, um, my dad did this or the other one. So you, you have tried your best. You are, have worked so hard to make a lot of money. But you are training your son that uh, that's how things should be. That is not right. Today we have got a young man in their early 20s 
and late 20s who are complete social misfits because their dads largely never taught them to sweat for whatever they were eating. Now, when we, 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 we teach them patience, let them know that we accumulate wealth over time. You don't go to bed and wake up rich. No, there are no miracles of that nature. So, dear men, part of this area where we are being accused, let us make sure that we are not accused again. Because once we are accused of impatience, then our sons will be accused of the same. And our sons, sons will be accused of the same. The cycle will continue. A day will come when they will be wanting to, to break a generational dysfunction that started with us. Can we do it right? Yes, we can. Accusation number two, idolatry. Did you know that today men have so many idols? So many. So many of them. It could be even the material wealth that we have accumulated. Or so many other things. An area of accusation. That there are so many things that to us means more than God does. There are so many things. And I say, uh, I want to give you a very simple definition of an idol. An idol is something that comes between us and God. Whether it is a human being that becomes an idol. Anything that comes between you and your God, that automatically becomes an idol. So that is exactly what I'm talking about. And we have myriads of them. And we can overcome that, dear men. We must be, remember, we must be at the forefront in leading our families to God. Can you imagine? They call you, those of you who are married, they call you a family priest. So can you imagine how tragic it would be? A family priest who does not know God a family priest who is not prayerful, a family priest who is not spiritually enlightened, a family priest who is not biblically enlightened, don't you think that would be a tragedy? A family priest who does not understand worship, mamma mia, that is sad. We can overcome this. Let's not be accused as they were accused of this. Accusation number three, intoxication. If you like, drunkenness. Drunkenness. I can't believe this point the more. Because you know, dear men, comparatively, we are accused more of drunkenness than our gracious women. And a good number of us have gotten lost in this path. My pain always is that... Uh, we do not work so hard even to help one another. Now, let me tell you of a sad story. It's about last year, I think. Yeah, because it was uh, um, yeah, towards the end of last year. A gentleman who has been struggling with alcohol. Uh, that was... Uh, my dad died in August. That was in February. Uh, no, not February, but July. July last year. So this gentleman... I'd been uh, struggling with, uh, with alcohol. And his friends know that he struggles with alcohol. A time came that um, his health could not carry him any longer. And he was admitted in hospital. And remember, this is after several attempts to stop having been ad uh, directed so by the doctor. This time the guy goes to hospital. He was in hospital for a month and a half. The friends who drinks with him, none of them went to hospital to look for her to check him or to visit him. The wife and the kids went. A fairly young man, the age of 51. Now, listen to the sad ending of the story. This man is discharged from hospital on a certain day. And with very clear instructions, and he was told, 
the day you will partake of this drink, chances of you leaving will almost be zero. And he saw not to drink again. The day he was discharged, the wife went for him. But he requested the wife that because he wanted to pass through the office to go sign some document, that he speaked by the, by the driver. So the wife drove to the, office, uh, to, the, to the hospital with her vehicle and the driver with his vehicle. So she processed the discharge, everything else, and the gentleman was discharged, and they went somewhere. They took lunch together. And then uh, the wife went back to the, to, to the house to go and prepare for him because there were some, his, his mom was coming to the house in the evening and his, some of his brothers and sisters just to come and give thanks to God over a meal that he had been discharged. This man went to the office, signed some few documents. His drinking buddies called him. And he said, um, I, you know, these, these are my boys. I can't let them down. But let me just go and tell them that me and the drink, we are not there anymore. We have had a pact that we will not be uh, visiting each other. So the gentleman is driven to the club by the driver. And then he's there, meets his boys, and uh, one thing leads to another. And this man, that was around now going to, to around seven. This man starts drinking. The first sip, the second sip, the wife is calling. Your brothers are here. Your mom is here. No, I'm coming. I'm finishing. I'm with my boys. And then she asked, Baba so and so, are you drinking? The first time he hesitated. He said no. Then the phone, uh, she hung on the other side. They said, that, but I'm coming, I'm coming right away. After an hour, she calls again. Straight to the question, Baba Nani, are you drinking? At this point, he is getting a bit intoxicated. So he said, uh, my dear, it's just a sip. And he was asked, do you remember what the doctor said? And then he said, no, my boys are, uh, have given me a concussion that this one cannot affect me. Oh, this one cannot affect you. Okay. One thing leads to another. Now he is completely taken. At around 10, he excuses himself to go to the loo. Dear good people, our man died in the loo. The mother is waiting for him. His brothers waiting for him. His sisters waiting for him. The wife waiting for him. His kids waiting for him. For a thanksgiving meal, having been discharged from the hospital. And that was the night they started the barrio arrangement. The sad story is that this man dies in the presence of his male friends, boys, who knew his struggle, who never participated in his recovery, but who escorted him, as it were, who escorted him to the grave. Dear men, we can do better. A good number of us have participated in escorting our, our, our friends to, the, to their graves, knowing their area of struggle. And instead of helping him to run away from the same drink, you urge him on, and the fellow is dead. It is, that is how sad it can be when we cannot be each other brother's keeper an area that we may need to work on. The fourth area of, of, uh, of, uh, that we need to work on is irrelevant ways of worship. Having church our own way is not just to answer why this world is going 
to hell the other one. How do we, how do, we do our worship? Going to church is one thing. Living well is another thing. But how do we do it? That is the question. Uh, how, is our, how is our ways of worship at home and everywhere else? And finally, immodesty. 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 You know, there is, there is no shame. The way we are dressing, the way we talk. And especially, dear men, the way we talk. Exposing our children to the, to the, um, to the dirty language. Some of you have a very dirty tongue that you spew all manner of insults to your wife or to whoever, and the kids are listening here, there. The saddest part that can ever happen in your life, very sad, extremely so. I know this can be done. I know you can try. You can overcome it. We can overcome it. The five areas that the Jews were accused, and yet as men, we are being accused of even today. Dear men, let us be sensitive to one another. Let us try to overcome those five areas of, of failure. And the most importantly, dear men, let us not participate in escorting our fellow brothers to their graves, having known their weaknesses. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Enjoy this day. And happy new month.